The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. On theory response number four, we have a rational function and we need to find out a lot of things about it and finally graph it. So let's start out with the basic information, the stuff you would need to graph it in the first place. So first of all, the domain of f. What we're going to want to do before we start figuring out all of these is to write the function in a more simplified format. So let's factor the top and the bottom. So our top, x squared minus 4x plus 3, that factors into x minus 3, x minus 1. And the bottom, x squared plus 2x plus 1, factors into x plus 1 squared. x plus 1 times x plus 1. So we have nothing that cancels out in this graph. So remember that on a rational function like this, if something did cancel out, that would indicate that there's a hole on the graph. So we don't have any uh, in this function. So the domain of f, everything that we're allowed to plug in. Well, the only thing we're not allowed to plug in is negative 1, because that would make our denominator 0. So we need everything except negative 1. So in interval notation, you write that like that. Everything from negative infinity up to but not including negative 1, and then everything not including negative 1 up to infinity. So that would be our domain. Um, I guess that was a part 1. Part 2 says the equation of the vertical asymptote. Well, we have our vertical asymptote when x is equal to negative 1, because that's on the denominator of our function after we've canceled out anything that we might have, in this case, nothing. So the equation of the vertical asymptote is just x equals negative 1. Remember, a vertical asymptote is a vertical line, so you always can write it as x equals. OK, 3 says the equation of the horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals something. And in this case, since we have a rational function, all we need to look at is the degree. Well, our top and bottom have the same degree. They just had degree 2. So the rule for horizontal asymptotes is if you have the same degree, you just look at the coefficients on that highest degree term. Our coefficients were just 1 and 1. So 1 over 1 is 1, of course. And we get a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. So 4 says the graph crosses its horizontal asymptote. The way you can check that is set your function equal to the horizontal asymptote and see if you get any solutions. So we're going to set this equal to 1 and see if we solve it, if we get anything. In this case, we're probably going to want to put the, the function back into its expanded form instead of um, factored. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 3. And we would multiply everything on the bottom over to the other side to start solving this. So we're going to get equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Well, you can see here that the x squareds cancel out. You get subtracted away from both sides. If we added 4x and subtracted 1 here, we get that x equals 1 third. So we have an answer for this then. The graph does cross the horizontal asymptote at x equals 1 third. All right, for number 5, we have the x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Well, the x-intercepts are where the function would be 0. That would be whatever makes the numerator equal to 0. Well, we have 3 and 1. So our x-intercepts are x equals 3 x equals 1. And our y-intercept is what we get when we plug in 0 for x. So if we plug in 0 here, on the denominator, we'll just get 1. So we don't need to worry about that. On the top, we'll get negative 3 times negative 1, which is 3. So our y-intercept is y equals 3. So the last thing we need to do is actually graph the function. So I'm going to make some space over here to do just that. Every piece of information that we've figured out so far is going to help us graph this function. 
So the first thing you should always put on it is asymptotes and intercepts. So we know that x equals 1 and x equals 3 were our intercepts. And we know that y equals 3 was our y-intercept. We know that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. So we have a vertical asymptote there. We know we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals positive 1. So we have a horizontal asymptote there. So far, so good. The next thing we know is that our horizontal asymptote was crossed at x equals 1 third. So somewhere around here, we are going to actually be crossing our horizontal asymptote. And that's all the information that we have. So what you need to do is realize that when you have a vertical asymptote, you either approach it going up or going down. It's pretty obvious that since we only cross the horizontal here and that the next point is above, that coming from the right to this, it has to be going up. It doesn't make any sense otherwise. So we're going to go through this y-intercept. We're going to go through that point that crossed the horizontal asymptote. So now what we need to consider before we're talking about this side of the graph, now only here, as what a horizontal asymptote means is as you go to the right to infinity, your line has to get close, closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote. Well, we have to cross through these two points. So the only way you could do that is if we went down here and back up. But now, once we pass this point, we can't cross this anymore because we already did the one point that crossed it. And we have to get closer to it. So the only way that can happen is if you do something like this. It just gets closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote as you go to infinity. All that's left to determine then is what happens on this side of the graph. Now, we didn't have any points crossing the horizontal asymptote on this side. Uh, we didn't have any intercepts on this side. We didn't have anything. So the only way that a graph could look then, if you don't have a cross and you don't have any intercepts, is that it would have to be like this or like this, because it has to get close to this asymptote as you go to the left. And it either has to go up or it has to go down, and it can't cross that asymptote. So all we need to do is try one point and see if it's above or below. Well, the easiest point to choose, since this is negative 1, is let's just try negative 2. And if we get something that's above, then we know it's up there, or vice versa. If we plug in negative 2, we get negative 5 times negative 3 over negative 1 squared. Well, negative 1 squared is just 1. Negative 5 times negative 3 is 15. So this point is way up here which means that this must be that shape for the left side of the vertical asymptote. So we took into account every piece of information here in graphing this function. Um, so asymptotes uh, and intercepts are always important. The last thing I want to mention is if you had a hole, you could graph your function using everything we did here the exact same way we did and then just at the end say, oh, there was a hole at this point, so I'll just make that an open circle. You can always just do the holes at the end. Remember, the holes would have happened if we had canceled anything out when we factored. In this case, we couldn't, so we didn't have any. But if you do have a hole, graph everything as normal, and then if you had a hole at some x value, you can just erase that part of the graph and put uh, an open circle in afterwards. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu